Okay, so what we're trying to do is, yeah, we want to provide customizable rollups. And what that means is we want people to be able to customize one, the base layer or the DA layer. So whether it's like Celestia, we support other ones, which I'm sorry, I'm embarrassed to say that during a Celestia lightning talk. <laughs> support like Polygon Avail, Eigen DA, like we'll support some others. Uh, we'll support other virtual machines. So right now we support Solana VM and EVM. And then we do some additional customizations based on what the app is. It's a game, maybe it wants like verifiable randomness. Maybe um, you're like a ZK protocol and you need like custom elliptic curves or something like that. So this is what we wanted to build. And then the question is like, how do we build it? So historically, like when Eclipse was first started, uh, so let, let's say you want to just like the most obvious solution to building your own like customizable rollup is we'd build it kind of like, I don't know, like Arbitrum or something. And we'd just start with EVM and we'd like implement settlement on all these different L1s. Then maybe we want to support SVM and naively now you'd have to implement an SVM like interactive fraud proofer or worse, if it's like a ZK VM, now you have to have ZK circuits for the Solana VM and all this stuff. Maybe we want to add like move in the future, then we have to redo this whole process. So there's nothing really gained by like, like there's not much infrastructure that can be reused. There's like orchestration infrastructure and stuff like that, but all the settlement logic would be highly bespoke to each bytecode. So uh, what are some other solutions here? One, uh, you could do something similar to like what ZK Sync does. ZK Sync has like some kind of shared intermediate representation where they take, like let's say you're writing in Solidity, they uh, compile it to like some LLVM intermediate representation, convert that to their own like, like circuit, or the, it's compatible with their own like ZK sync circuits. But what's bad about that approach is now, like I mean ZK, I'm trying to remember when this was, they had this like big announcement that they had finally added support for Yule. It's like language specific support because they have to re-implement this like bespoke compiler for their ZK sync machinery for every single language. And the reality is not that many people are using Yule compared to Solidity or all these other languages. So that's a very like tedious, again, like one at a time type approach. And then like the last approach, which is what we opted for was just pick a VM and then, uh, so we pick the Solana VM for reasons that we can go into. And let's say we want to support EVM. We have a smart contract that lives on the Solana VM and it basically acts as an EVM bytecode interpreter. And then of course, like you want to support EVM wallets. So you need some proxies. So your EVM wallet connects to the proxy and that wraps it in the Solana transaction, sends it to your Solana VM. And in some ways this is, feels kind of forced, right? Because maybe there's like transaction size limits or gas limits that are more strict in Solana, especially when the, you have the overhead of this interpreter. And there's like ways that you can kind of like improve that, but that's the downside of this approach. But by doing this, we just have to like implement these bytecode loaders in the Solana VM. Uh, we have to like have these proxy nodes, but we can reuse all of the logic, especially given that like for our uh, ZK Solana VM, we're using risk zero. So we like basically take BPF programs uh, and then uh, like we have like this JIT compiler that outputs risk five bytecode. Then we have to like make the memory accesses work correctly. So then like it works in the risk zero. I don't for context for people who don't know, risk zero is a ZK risk five VM. So it can run any risk five program. Uh, and, and that's where we're reusing for our ZK settlement. So, uh, so anyway, so that's, that's how we like support multiple VMs. On the DA part, like we want to support multiple DA layers. So probably want to do some kind of sovereign settlement. So that's the motivation behind why Eclipse is architectured this way. Uh, okay, so let's. <clears throat> okay, so what are the downsides here? Uh, well, I mean, one thing, settlement, there's, I mean, like, so the Solana VM, and even the EVM to some degree, is, it's not really built for, to be used as a rollup. I mean, and especially for the Solana VM because the state for Solana is not stored in a Merkle tree. And that's important, especially for an optimistic rollup, because let's say, uh, so the way an optimistic, I'm gonna assume everyone knows how an optimistic rollup works. So say, let's say you wanna dispute some like state root. You're like, oh, this is the last state root I, disagree, I agree with. Uh, here are the inputs and you have to be able to re-execute that on the settlement layer. So that part of committing to the inputs and saying these were the inputs that belonged to the state tree at that time requires a state root. So without a state root, you can't do that like kind of input commitment and then like re-executing like through some settlement layer, that's like a little bit easier to do. So uh, in order to do that, we have to like stick a sparse Merkle tree within the Solana VM. And like you obviously want to benefit from the parallelism that's inherent in the Solana VM. That's like part of why we picked it to begin with. So you have to have a sparse Merkle tree that's able to be updated in such a way that it's, it's consistent with allowing this like highly parallel execution layer. So, um, so that's one difficulty. Another is that like we want to do MEV redistribution with things like skip. That's tough because Solana completely removed the mempool. So we have to like add a mempool back in and that like in has challenges of its own in terms of now we have to make decisions in terms of 
Uh, I mean, it shouldn't, it will, I mean, it's something we have to explore further with the skip team. But ideally, it, it probably wouldn't impact throughput very much, but it's definitely something that Solana, again, like, was not really designed for. So these are like examples of the downsides of starting with the Solana VM. Okay, uh, this is like more high level stuff. All right, these are like use cases. So this is all like gaming specific stuff, but the thinking, all right, so maybe to take a step like even further back behind like all right, Eclipse, we wanna let you spin up your own customizable rollups. The question is like, why would you wanna do that? And the answer is there's a bunch of use cases such as games or maybe physical infrastructure networks or enterprise chains that maybe need to be OFAC compliant or have additional like privacy layers on top or something. Uh, maybe they need like custom opcodes. Th this, this is the roll-up thesis, so maybe everyone's already like bought into this, but this is why people would want to spin up their own chain. And these are examples of specific features that like having your own chain could, could like give to a game. This, some of these features are not actually specific to roll-ups, but this is just like, maybe we're talking to Zynga or something, someone who's like not even, in, Zynga actually has a crypto team, but someone who's like not super familiar with crypto, then the question is like, why would they want to be in crypto at all? So we have to motivate that for them as well. So that, that's what this, is basically, um, and that's, that's basically it. I, I, I don't think it, like the rest of these slides are, are really super relevant, but maybe it makes sense to open it up to Q&A, or if there's anything that I glossed over, uh, happy to like dive deeper into that. Yeah. How are you going to incorporate verifiable then in this? Uh, yeah, so that one's tough. Uh, the, the, I guess, I mean, the simple answer is you just have an Oracle that's just like automatically built into like all of the, maybe there's like a system program and you automatically deploy this to like every chain that's spun up, if it's a gaming chain. And then the way that that Oracle gets its data is through some like separate set of nodes that are doing some verifiably random scheme. And then you can always compare against the two or something, or you could dispute. So that, that's one way. Um, so when the like website for Eclipse says that you can, because I read the docs recently, um, when it says that you can like deploy any VM rollup, you're not really deploying any VM rollup, you're deploying a C level VM with the EVM inside. Yeah, don't tell anyone. Yeah, that's right. All right, all right, got it, got it. So isn't, are you guys redoing that or are you guys like taking the work from like Neon? Uh, yeah, we work with the Neon team. Yeah, so like half of our chains are EVM actually. What part of like the value, a value accrual of like a rollup that launches on Eclipse, does like Eclipse play a part? It would be the settlement process. So we have like this honest minority settlement layer. It's like if you took a solvent rollup and just did no execution on it then that's, that's what Eclipse is providing. So, uh, so I mean, it's kind of unclear what would be the right revenue model for something like that. You could do like a simple SaaS model where we just like don't take any cut, we just charge a fat, flat like fiat, like I don't know, 100 grand a year or something. Another option is you take a char uh, like a slice of transaction volume. Seems like a little bit more crypto native, but then the, run the risk you run is when a chain gets big enough, it's running like millions of transactions a day or something, there's some break even point where they're like, we should just be our own layer one which maybe is like the future of how these rollups will progress. You start as like a rollup and then you like establish like some critical mass of transaction volume and then you branch off as your like totally sovereign L1. Uh, and, and another option is like you just have some like kind of staking mechanism. So we're, we're basically, that's all to say that we haven't finalized our tokenomics. We don't, we don't know what the revenue model would look like. Uh, so you brushed on this, but you skipped it over. What was the motivation for using a Solana VM as the foundational layer? Yeah, well, we wanted a fast VM. So I think of like the idea of trying to implement or re-implement settlement for every bytecode was just like out of the question. So we didn't want to do that. Compiling to an intermediate representation, we, we explored that a little bit. There's some tooling like Solang, and like there, there are stuff where like, like many languages can compile it to some common bytecode. But ultimately, like they're not super like sustain. We'd want to like compile it to a bytecode that's good for the CK circuitry that we're putting together. So it's better that we just have like one highly optimized like CK circuit for one bytecode. So that we didn't want like want to like reuse anyone else's tooling for that. So that was part of it. Uh, and the Solana VM is really fast. So, like it's parallelized, has local fee markets, which like every rollup's going to need at some point. Because I think that like one point, like I mean, totally tweets all kinds of crazy things. But one thing that like is definitely true is. What causes high fees is not really about like a lot of, I mean on Ethereum it is, but in, in a lot of cases it's not about block space contention, it's about state contention. When many people are accessing the same piece of state, that's what like causes like high fees. And therefore you, you don't want, like if I'm like a guy like trying to just use, or be a normal guy using a DeFi protocol, if there's a big NFT mint going on, that should not impact me. And that's something that like Solana identified and built this fee market to address. And may maybe they identified it because like they're one of the highest throughput chains that exist right now. They're the only ones that like reach that critical mass to even 
like they learned through experience. They're like, NFTs ended up being a big use case. They started seeing like, this is taking down the whole chain. Let's address that directly. Uh, and like probably all these other high throughput chains will end up hitting something similar. So you could have settlement layer, like what kind of features does it have to make it especially good at settlement, or do you also plan to have asset, asset issuance or other things on the settlement layer? Yeah, we do bridging on from there too, but yeah, we haven't thought too much about asset issuance or anything. Maybe it's something that we should chat about. I'm curious when you're like talking to your customers, and you, you allow them to basically pick their DA layer. Yeah. How are you seeing preferences around that? By default, we spend a, we go to Celestia. Like if they have no preference, we always use yeah Celestia. And most people don't. <laughs> Popular thing to say in this room. Most people don't have a preference. Yeah, most people don't really seem to know or care. Yeah, I mean, the reality is, I think it'll end up being like, where do they fall in terms of like decentralization versus the cost they're willing to pay? Like, that's something like that. Or, like, I, mean, I guess you could use it. It doesn't seem to, I don't see the advantage of using Ethereum versus Celestia, but maybe there's someone like, like the Zynga. Zynga, what they ended up doing is they're just deploying their apps directly to the Ethereum layer one. So like these guys just like don't know what's going on. So that that's kind of what's uh, how some of these people think. And then does the Eclipse settlement layer is it part of is it watching all the different DA networks at the same time? Yeah. So for the verifiers, we actually like group that with the execution layer. So as, if someone spins up an Eclipse chain, we're like, oh, it's also on you to run a verifier. Like because it wouldn't be feasible for us to like try to verify for all these chains with all their different you know maybe they have different block times or something. <laughs> I'm curious about like your gaming strategy. Like you mentioned about that's the focus for now in terms of product market fit. Yeah, so I, I guess like I mean, part of the reason why we pick gaming is just like there's a lot of interesting areas for app chains, so we just like flipped a coin and we're like, let's pick one of these. Uh, and like the the situation with gaming is that a lot of like crypto games, the extent that they incorporate crypto is pretty limited. So that those kinds of use cases are not as interesting for us. But we try to push people to incorporate like more crypto native game mechanics. Like we would love to see some more stuff like streaming micropayments or like I don't know some kind of create to earn schemes or things that like could only exist on chain. Uh, and that's I mean we spent we have like these docs of like a bunch of different game mechanics that we think would be interesting to see. Uh, and like we want to be like design partners for these games, especially given that a lot of the time if someone is in that category of games that are receptive to being really avant garde. They might not have the crypto knowledge to know like what's the right way or the right mechanics that they can incorporate. So we have to kind of act as that partner and give that expertise. Yeah, uh, yeah I wanted to like to kind of like follow up from what Barry asked about like you know people having preferences for DA layers. Yeah. Like that to execution. Do you get people that are like, oh, I need like solidity in my life, or I want to eat class and. Oh, there are definitely people who have like strong preferences on VMs, and even they'll have strong preferences on the DA layer. Like, so what'll happen is Polygon will give, give someone like a million dollar grant. So it's like you have to deploy to Polygon Avail. So that then it's like there's not much wiggle room. They have to use that DA layer. Gotcha.